Hi, this is Richard Byrne at freetechforteachers.com. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the other features of My Maps that I didn't cover in the first two videos. In the first two videos, we looked at how to create place marks from scratch, and we looked at how to import data from a spreadsheet and have that data mapped for you. Now let's take a look at some of the options for sharing this map. Go over here to this little folder icon and click that. We can now select embed on my site. And I'll get that little warning that I didn't make the map public, so let's make sure I make that public. There we go. So I made it public for anyone to view. And now we'll embed on my site. And I'll just copy and paste that code and I can put it into a blogger blog post. I can put it into a Google site post. I can put it into Weebly or any other uh, platform that I'm using for publishing on the web. It's also a neat feature here for uh, printing the map. So let's click that and now let's choose our orientation. We say we want landscape, which is probably best for a map application. Choose our paper size. So if you have a, a bigger printer, uh, you know, have a slightly larger printer, and we can choose our output type PDF or image, and then go ahead and print that map. We also have this option here to export all the data to KML. Um, and in doing so, we can export that data and then we can import it into Google Earth. So if you're a Google Earth user or you're looking for an easy way to get kids started in Google Earth, um, My Maps is a great way to show them how to create a place mark and then import that data into, uh, into Google Earth. And finally, let's take a look at some of the uh, drawing and measurement tools that are available in My Maps. So let's say I want to zoom in here on uh, Bryant Pond, Maine. Oops, I spell it correctly. All right, so I'll go ahead and zoom in on Bryant Pond, and let's say I want to just measure uh, my bike route. So I'll go ahead to measure distances and areas. This little icon here. Click it once. And now you'll see these little crosshairs, and I can click and drag along my road. Or if I want to go ahead and take a shortcut back across through the woods, right, I can do so as well. So again, click that icon and drag. And when you're done measuring, just double click and it will stop measuring for you. You can also go ahead and draw lines in the map. So let's say we want to add a line or a shape. Maybe we want to highlight a particular area around here. And now we can go ahead and label this and call it area 49. And I'm not going to include anything else about that for now. You notice I added that to my big layer from earlier. Let's say places I've visited, visited as an adult. I want to work on that layer now. So I selected that layer. And again, I can draw a line or a shape. And this is really useful if you have students looking at um, some geographic data and doing some measurement that way. We'll just call this one Area 1. Uh, great place for walking dogs in the woods. Lots of rivers and trees. And we can see here, it gives us the area that we have highlighted by using the drawing tool. And the last thing we'll take a look at here is when we add a layer, 
down below you see we have this option for base map. We can change our base map. And now I'm using uh, the satellite view as opposed to the roadmap view that I was using earlier. And that's really nice when we're looking at, as I mentioned earlier, highlighting a particular area um, by using the drawing tools in your Google Map. So that's part three of using my maps. If you have not seen the first two videos, please go back and watch the first two and uh, give it a try. And as always, if you have questions, you run into problems, feel free to email me, richardburn at freetech4teachers.com.